Small crossovers should be fun and fashionable, but that doesn't mean they can't also be versatile, capable and practical too. Like Vauxhall's little mocker? Perhaps. He is the new face of this changing brand, and it's one you might very well find yourself growing to like. Suddenly, Vauxhall design is all about the delivery of that most current of automotive traits, the lifestyle statement. Has been ever since brand parent General Motors belatedly realised that profit, not market share, was of most importance in achieving commercial respectability. And the result has been a whole wave of new models wearing the Griffin badge. The individualistic Adam Premium Super Mini, the stylish Cascader Convertible, and a subject here, the interesting Mocha small SUV crossover. I use the terms SUV and crossover, but if I'm honest, both are more likely to mislead rather than enlighten you regarding this car's market positioning. It isn't really a Freelander or RAV4-like compact SUV, any more than it's a Qashqai or Peugeot 3008 like crossover model. Slightly smaller than cars in either of these categories, it is instead a trendier, more affordable way for a small, fashionable family to get a foothold in the growing soft-roading market segment. And it's aimed directly at one rival that's really shaken up this sector of the market. Nissan's trendy little Duke. Wild and wacky, the Duke brought a super-sized serving of attitude to this conservatively styled segment. But not everyone liked its willfully outlandish looks and its cramped rear cabin. So this mocha takes it on with a more spacious super mini floor plan and fashionable cheekiness designed for wider appeal. It's a package also created to perfectly position Vauxhall against other direct segment contenders like the Mini Countryman, the Ford EcoSport, and this mocker's own design stablemate, the Chevrolet Trax. A Vauxhall then that is in every way a car of its time, very much chiming with the changing face of this developing brand. Let's try it. Mocha buyers are people likely to be enthusiasts for life rather than for cars. That'll be part of the reason they'll be looking to uh, buy a model like this in the first place rather than a conventional super mini or family hatch. They'll like the uh, SUV style high set driving position, the trendy Sloan Street styling and the optional possibility of off-road shenanigans. Whether they'll care quite so much about ride and handling perfection is another question. One that the engineers behind this car initially misjudged by introducing it with one dynamic spec for all European markets. A policy hastily reconsidered after a torrent of negative media feedback following the original launch. So it is that this car gets the specific steering and suspension settings for the British market that the engineers once thought weren't necessary. And as with the Adam Super Mini, uh, it's a last minute package of dynamic changes that have been just enough to keep this Vauxhall in contention with a class where there are some very accomplished rivals. Now it isn't quite as sharp and wieldy as a rival Nissan Duke, nor does it have the big SUV polish of a comparable Skoda Yeti, but a pleasing compromise between the two should suit most potential buyers. Under the bonnet, uh, there are three main engine options, with the least expensive of the trio, as ever, being the least desirable. A two-wheel drive only 1.6 litre petrol variant with 115 PS on tap. It um, has only 155 newton metres of torque, so there's not a great deal of pulling power, which means that sometimes you feel that you're rowing the car along a bit with the gear lever, a stick that only offers you five speeds. A better bet for petrol people is the mocha I'm driving here, the 140 PS 1.4 litre turbo. Now, uh, it's usefully more rapid, making 60 from rest in just 9.4 seconds on the way to a top speed of 118 miles an hour, and it has 200 newton metres of torque to draw upon. Despite this, and the standard inclusion of four-wheel drive, 
uh, the provision of a six-speed manual gearbox and more modern mechanicals mean that it's actually more economical to run than the feebler 1.6. The most practical engine choice though is the one that most buyers will probably select, the 130 PS 1.7 litre CDTI diesel. Now you get all the main mechanical choices with this unit, so you can specify your car uh, with either a six speed manual or a six speed automatic gearbox and with or without four wheel drive. Perhaps more importantly you get a lot more pulling power, 300 newton metres in all. In theory, every mocker should be able to tow a brake trailer of up to uh, 1,200 kilograms, but this diesel variant is the only one that really takes such a task in its stride. If that's the kind of thing you're going to be doing regularly, then you'll want to look at specifying the all-wheel drive option, one of those fully adaptive systems that uh, instantly reacts to the surface that you're driving over. So there are no knobs and levers, just a set of sensors to monitor things like steering angle, wheel speeds, throttle pedal position and engine revs. Based on all this data, the electronic uh, torque transfer uh, setup that controls the whole system uh, will always know when extra traction is going to be required and at that point automatically and seamlessly transfer up to 50% of the engine's torque from the front to the rear axle. That's particularly useful during mild off-road use, of course, during which you may have an opportunity to appreciate the advantages of an ESP stability control system that's cleverer than most. Built in is a uh, hill start assist system to get you up steep slopes from which you can descend using a hill descent control setup that keeps the car at a constant speed until you slither to the bottom. Now, thanks to a rather restricted ride height of just 157 millimetres, I can't imagine too many Mocha owners will be putting this to the test. Uh, many more of them are likely to appreciate the advantages of the all-wheel drive system during high-speed cornering, uh, during which the uh, all-wheel drive setup can instantly, within a fraction of a second, uh, activate itself to reduce wheel slip. Vauxhall designers like to blur established market categories and have done so again right here. So just as Vauxhall's uh, Mariva compact MPV is neither tiny, think Nissan Note, nor uh, family hatchback formed, think Renault Cynic, but sized somewhere between the two, so this Mocha sets its own course amongst small crossovers. Uh, Though it's super mini based, just like a Nissan Duke, it's actually nearly as big inside as a family hatchback style crossover model like a Nissan Qashqai. But whatever your thoughts about this car's size, you'll probably agree that the way this mocker looks will go a long way towards selling it. Cute and individualistic without being willfully outlandish in the manner of a rival Nissan Duke and better resolved overall than the rather awkward looking Mini Countryman. The front, which features a neatly tailored chrome bar with the Vauxhall Griffin badge at its centre, was an area the designers worked hard on, the priority being to create a solid, masculine feel, even though the designers were well aware that uh, the likely clientele for this car was uh, probably going to be very much female orientated. Sure enough, the Mocha has a look that'll have wider appeal across both sexes, with purposeful protective cladding on the bumpers and the wheel arches, and nice touches like Vauxhall's Blade's signature light-catching line on the body side, which sweeps up towards the rear, where uh, there's a uh, skid plate finished in polished aluminium, and uh, a rear window that's been combined with a roof spoiler and distinctively styled rear lights. Under the skin are the underpinnings of a Super Mini, more specifically the Chevrolet Aveo mechanicals that Chevrolet has also used in its Trax small lifestyle uh, crossover model that's one of this Vauxhall's sharpest rivals. Now in the back, the rear seats benefit from these wide opening doors that simplify the fitment of things like child seats, though the sharply rising waistline might restrict the view out for smaller occupants if they're here for any length of time. 
Now, once you are inside, there's actually more space than you'd expect uh, from something based on a car from the Fiesta Super Mini class, um, especially when it comes to headroom. True, three adults would be a little squashed if positioned back here for any length of time, but there's no less space than you'd find from something Focus or Astra family hatch shaped. As for boot space, well, there's no high boot lip to negotiate. And once you get inside, there's 356 litres of carriage capacity, with more under the floor should you opt not to have a full-size spare wheel. Now, to put that into perspective, it's about the same as you get in a Mini Countryman, but it's about 30% more than you get in a rival Nissan Juke. And if you push forward the 6040 split folding rear seat, then there really is a lot of room to play with. You've got 1,372 litres of space in a load bay that has a length of, well, over one and a half metres. Now, to put that into perspective for you, in a rival Mini Countryman, you get 1,170 litres of space. Uh, in a supposedly larger Nissan Qashqai uh, crossover, you get just 860 litres, and in a Nissan Duke, only 550 litres. And at the wheel, well, forward visibility is great thanks to the high-set SUV-style driving position. Over the shoulder visibility, though, isn't quite so good thanks to the thick rear three-quarter pillars and the rising rear waistline. As for cabin aesthetics, well, despite the appearance of Vauxhall's signature wing-shaped instrument panel that wraps around the door inserts, the interior isn't overly adventurous, with most of the switch gear lifted from the brand's more conventional models, which means that some of it isn't that intuitive to use until you get familiar with things. Still, that whole conservative vibe might just mean that this car mops up sales from customers left a little cold by the sheer extravagance of a Nissan Duke. Just make sure that you choose your interior decor carefully. I'm not totally convinced by the blue and brown trim of this particular example. Splashes of chrome around the centre console are supposed to suggest a premium feel, and build quality from the Korean factory seems good. The real emphasis here, though, seems to be on practicality, with no fewer than 19 storage areas dotted around the cabin, including cubbies just in front of and behind the gear lever, two glove boxes, and a lidded compartment to the right of the steering wheel. Most models also get a 230 volt three pin mains power supply, ideal for game minded kids. So, this Mokka is a small, trendily styled five door little SUV crossover, isn't it? Well, yes. So it'll be priced directly against the other car we tend to think of in this market sector, Nissan's Duke, won't it? Well, no. Vauxhall points out correctly that their car is a significantly larger thing, hence a price span that lies in the 16 to 24,000 pound bracket. To put that into perspective for you, it means that you'll be paying a premium of around two and a half thousand pounds to own this mocker over an equivalent Duke. I say equivalent, it's actually only at base 1.6 litre petrol level that you can compare these two cars directly. When it comes to diesel power, the Duke's 1.5 litre DCI is significantly outgunned by this Vauxhall's 1.7 litre CDTI unit. Uh, and in terms of four wheel drive, well, you get a much wider choice with this Vauxhall with uh, both petrol and diesel options for well under £20,000. In the Duke range, all wheel drive capability is only provided by the exorbitantly priced uh, turbo petrol 1.6 that's dirty, thirsty, and that almost nobody buys. Get beyond Duke comparisons, and mostly the news is all good. A conventional crossover model like a Nissan Qashqai is really a much bigger car, though it does have a smaller boot. And though in entry level petrol form, it'll cost you around the same as an equivalent 1.6 litre petrol mocha, uh, other Qashqai variants are much more expensive than their Vauxhall equivalents. So what else could you consider in comparison to this car that would be directly comparable? 
a Skoda Yeti perhaps? Well, no, not really. Though the Skoda is one of the few cars in this segment that can better this Vauxhall on interior space, it's a much more conservatively styled thing. And though uh, the uh, 1.2 litre TSI petrol Skoda Yeti uh, will save you around £1,000 on an equivalent 1.6 litre petrol Vauxhall Mocha, elsewhere in the Yeti range, uh, the mechanicals really don't stack up to those that you'll find in this Vauxhall. Take uh, a mainstream diesel Yeti model, the 2 litre TDI 110 PS. That'll give you far less power than you'll find in an equivalent 1.7 litre CDTI Mocha. And when it comes to four wheel drive, you'll only find that on much more expensive uh, Yeti variants. It's a much more affordable thing to specify in this Vauxhall. No, I think a potential Mocha customer would be far more likely to be considering something like a Mini Countryman. On the face of things, that car has much the same kind of trendy appeal and is priced well nigh identically in entry-level petrol form. Dig a little deeper into the specs though, and again, this Vauxhall holds an advantage. It's much more affordable with a comparable uh, diesel engine fitted or with four-wheel drive installed. And other potential rivals? Well, you could talk to your Ford dealership about their EcoSport model, a car you can expect to be directly priced against this one. Or you could save a few hundred pounds model for model over this Mocha and opt for its design stablemate, the Chevrolet Trax. Otherwise, you might also find yourself looking at other similarly targeted cars like Fiat's Panda 4x4 or the Suzuki SX4. But bear in mind that these are significantly smaller inside and powered by a range of much feebler, less powerful engines. Perhaps the most telling comparisons though come when, as many will, you begin to compare this car to something more conventional. Why, for example, would you buy an ordinary 1.6 litre petrol powered Vauxhall Astra family hatchback when for £1,500 less you could get this Mocha with exactly the same engine and even more luggage space? A diesel Astra family hatch with the same 1.7 litre 130 PS CDTI unit you'll find in this Mocha will also cost you £1,500 more. And again, you'll find that same diesel engine fitted to the much smaller Corsa Super Mini, where it costs you, well, around the same as an equivalent Mocha. If, having considered all of this, you decide that it is indeed a Mocha that you actually want, then you'll be pleased to find that whichever of the five door models that you choose, uh, that's the 1.6 litre two wheel drive petrol, the 1.4 litre turbo petrol four wheel drive that I have here, or the 1.7 litre CDTI diesel, which is available in either drive configuration. Whichever of those you go for, you should find it decently equipped. Now, looking at the entry level S variants, that doesn't seem to be the case. These lacking many of the features that uh, lifestyle trendy buyers will want to have. Things like Bluetooth phone configuration, alloy wheels and a leather covered steering wheel. But Vauxhall has thought of that, offering a well kitted out tech line version that your dealer can offer at entry level pricing that includes all of these niceties as well as a whole list of others, including auto headlamps and wipers, high beam assist that'll automatically dip your headlamps in the face of oncoming traffic at night, front fog lamps, electrically folding door mirrors, rear parking sensors, satellite navigation, and for the stereo, the all important USB and iPod connectivity. That's in addition to features that are standard on all Mocha models, a tally that runs to daytime running lights, silver effect roof rails, um, a remote control alarm system with central locking, uh, power for the front windows and the heated door mirrors, air conditioning, uh, a trip computer, cruise control, and a decent quality CD stereo with uh, aux in compatibility, steering wheel mounted controls and a digital radio. As for options, well personally unless I really was urban bound I'd want to do without the six speed automatic gearbox that's a £1,000 option for diesel drivers. I would though want to consider the really clever flex fix bicycle carrier that slots neatly away into the rear bumper when not in use. 
Oh, and the ergonomic premium seats would be nice to have too, as would the Bi Xenon headlamps with their adaptive forward lighting system. When it comes to safety, all the electronic driving aids you'd expect are present and correct, and a few more too. So there's anti-lock brakes with cornering brake control and brake assist for emergency stops. Then there's ESP stability control that not only has traction control built in, but also a, a, a hill start assist system that helps you up uh, sharp slopes and stops you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. And there's a hill descent control system built into the setup too that eases you gently down sharp inclines. Passive safety kit includes twin, front, side and curtain airbags. It all justifies a five-star, top-of-the-shop, Euro NCAP safety showing. As far as cost of ownership is concerned, it would be fair to call this Mocha class competitive. As you would expect these days, a start-stop system is fitted as standard, though only on manual gearbox models, to cut the engine when you don't need it, stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. And as a result, even the least efficient engine in the range, the entry-level 115 PS 1.6 litre petrol unit, doesn't lag too far behind its uh, comparable 1.6 litre petrol Nissan Duke or Mini Countryman rivals. Uh, it manages 43.5 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and puts out 153 grams per kilometre of CO2. Now, despite its extra power and weight, the 1.4 litre turbocharged four-wheel drive Mocha model that I'm driving here actually improves upon those figures, managing 44.1 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and putting out 149 grams per kilometre of CO2. And that is significantly better than all-wheel drive, petrol-powered Mini Countryman and Nissan Duke rivals. Uh, cars that are slightly more powerful but don't ultimately take you very much faster. Stacking up even better is the Mocha in 130 PS 1.7 litre CDTI diesel form. Thanks to clean tech technology, which optimizes combustion control, NOx nitrogen oxide emissions are substantially reduced and overall efficiency improved. To the point where this variance figures 62.8 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 120 grams per kilometre of CO2 are really not far off those of a Mini Countryman Cooper D diesel model that with 20 PS less takes a second more to go from rest to 60. And uh, the Mocha diesel's uh, running cost figures are actually better than those of a much feebler 1.5 litre DCI diesel powered Nissan Duke. Bear in mind though that ordering your 1.7 litre diesel powered Mocha with automatic transmission will exact a heavy penalty of around 15% on your fuel and CO2 returns, despite the Auto Gearbox's provision of a clever auto select uh, engine idling function. For me though, possibly the best package of the bunch is the 130 PS diesel Mocha equipped with four wheel drive. It's way cheaper to buy than uh, all-wheel drive diesel-powered rivals, and so equipped, thanks to a weight penalty of just 65 kilograms, it'll still return you 57.6 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and put out 129 grams per kilometre of CO2. Not too much of a premium to pay to enable you to drive confidently to work during the next snowy snap. What else? Well, to get you close, or somewhere close, to the quoted fuel and CO2 figures on a regular day-to-day -day basis, there's an eco section of the trip computer that gives you a gear shift change indicator, uh, shows you your fuel consumption results over the last 30 miles, and offers a graphical display supposed to encourage eco-minded driving. That only leaves insurance groups, which range between five and 14 on the one to 50 grouping scale. And there's a the peace of mind of a huge 10 year, 100,000 mile warranty, though bear in mind that that only applies to the first owner. Not too long ago, it was hard to think of a more conventional brand than Vauxhall, but that was then. Here's how the company is thinking now. Looks a lot more appealing, doesn't it? True, this isn't the sharpest handling car in its class, but the pre-launch tweaks have made it as good as it needs to be. 
and it may not be as affordable as some might expect, but that's only an issue if your comparison is with something smaller, much less well equipped and probably more feebly powered. Look clearly, as I've tried to do here, at what you actually get for what you actually pay and the Mocha makes fashionable sense with size and styling pitched almost perfectly. It's practical, well-equipped, affordable to run and in 4x4 form, seasonally capable too. A car with an appeal that builds as your interest in it grows. The kind of car Vauxhall needs to make for a more fashionable future.